Hi, I've got a little demo VM lab set up here to kind of test the heart bleed. Um, I know a lot of been, has been going around about the vulnerability lately, and uh, people are probably tired of hearing about it, but maybe some people haven't had a chance to see it yet. And I also wanted to kind of show what you could do with it after you get the uh, the private key. So, um, kind of dive right into it here. I'm using Security Onion as the server side. Um, Security Onion ships uh, their default ISO has a vulnerable version of OpenSSL and it does run Apache so it's it's pretty easy to just exploit by default. Um, if you go ahead and do an app kit just upgrade it will patch it um, so it's not a not a big deal but um, we'll just show first of all one of the Python POC scripts basically one of the first ones I saw that came out um, still works pretty well just for testing so we're gonna run that against the patch version just to kinda see what happens when you run it against something that's not vulnerable basically just says we didn't receive a heartbeat response server likely not vulnerable uh, obviously you don't want to run any of these tests against anything you don't own or have explicit permission to that should go without saying but I guess it doesn't um, so now on our security onion we're gonna go ahead and after we saw that revert back to something that is vulnerable and it might take just a second here for VMware Now we're in a state of default installation where we are running the vulnerable version of OpenSSL. So we're going to go ahead and run this command again and see what we get. Um, basically just a hex dump of you know, the mem some random memory location. Nothing real interesting in here because this is again a fresh installation. Not really any logins or anything but um, everybody knows that you can, you can see some interesting stuff in there sometimes but that's not really what I'm focused on here. Uh, a little while after the original POC exploits came out um, some came out to kind of automatically extract the private keys so I'm going to show you one of those as well just to kind of show you how fast it can be in a VM environment it's kind of crazy but also not a normal use case so go ahead and run this and we almost instantly get the private key in a VM lab situation so let me go ahead and save that out Now what we can do since we have that, um, go ahead and fire up Wireshark here. You're actually going to see something you might not expect depending on how much you've actually played with the Heartbleed thing and what you think you can do with a private key. So we'll just start uh, sniffing on the default interface and we'll throw some traffic towards the um, Security Onion page which is HTTPS encrypted obviously. put some stuff in here. Okay. Just basically wanted to generate some traffic that was TLS. So, uh, now we can actually go ahead and stop our capture. You can see we've got all this uh, TLS, and I'll, I'll use TS, TLS and SSL kind of interchangeably just out of habit. I know they're not technically the same. so. So we can go into this TLS traffic and right click and protocol preferences and go into our RSA keys list. Basically we want to add a new key. You want to do the IP address of the server which is our security onion box port 443. And you actually want to do HTTP because uh, you know it is TLS but the actual protocol underneath it once you decrypt it is still HTTP. So keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and pick our key file here. There. I mean key it doesn't require a password we'll apply that okay and you know there's a private key in here so we should see all the goodies right uh, the answer is no with uh, the particular installation of security onion um, it actually has the support for the perfect forward secrecy which is one of the mitigations that was announced early on in heartbleed that would kind of help you out basically um, what happens here is <coughs> in the the initial hello from the client for SSL, which would be the Debian box in this case, but uh, basically it just says, hey, I can use any of these 35 cipher suites. Which one do you want to use? And uh, you can see there's some in here with a DHE, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but let's go to the next phase here where the server talks back. 
and it says, hey, okay, I see all those ones you can use. I want to use this one. So this is a uh, TLS over, uh, well, with AES 128, obviously, but the key exchange is done with this DHE, which is Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. Um, now the Diffie-Hellman key exchange uh, with the, the ephemeral session ID, or I'm not 100% on the terminology for it, but that's my understanding anyway. So the key exchange um, kind of changes every time. So if you aren't uh, actively man, on, man in the middling the initial handshake, um, basically even with the private key from the SSL you can't decrypt these packets. Um, and that's why they call it forward secrecy because if you have a bunch of PCAPs piled up in a drive somewhere and eventually you end up with the private key you're still not going to be able to decrypt them. So in order to kind of see what the how this should actually work in a normal environment because the Diffie-Hellman ephemeral key exchange isn't very widely used on the internet right now. Uh, we can go into our security onion and kind of modify our cipher suites and somewhere in here. Oh, I don't know if that looks right. We just look for a suite. There we go. Now we can go in our cipher suites here, and um, we can say, "Hey, just don't use anything with Diffie Hellman." And then we need to restart Apache. If you don't restart it, it, it won't uh, take effect. The same as if you don't restart Apache after patching OpenSSO, that also doesn't fix the issue for Heartbleed. But so now we go back over here and uh, kind of start a new capture up. We don't need this stuff. And go back in here and generate some more traffic. And we've still got our private key saved in Wireshark, so shouldn't have to do much more to just go ahead and see this traffic decrypted. There we go. So now we can see, uh, like I said, we've already loaded our private key in there from the last time. We just had the, the perfect forward secrecy issue. But now that we no longer have that issue, we are seeing the raw uh, unencrypted HTTP traffic here. So we follow the stream. Oh, wait. You can't follow the stream. But we don't need to. So basically, um, you know, you can get more into it and on other servers with other things going, you'll see a lot more interesting stuff. But this was just kind of a demonstration of of the effect. So um, that is pretty much it. So if you have the Diffie-Hellman ephemeral exchange on a vulnerable server, um, you're still not really vulnerable to getting your data decrypted that way unless you have somebody doing an active man in the middle on that, that initial key exchange. And... Uh, I'm kind of interested in how that works and how that can be done, so if I ever get any time, I might kind of dig into that in the future, but I don't know. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching. I hope you saw something you didn't already know.